All right. It is Monday afternoon. We're here with Stephen Morgan, the fabulous filmmaker behind Rook. Uh, that just came out. Uh, it's available on Amazon. I advise everyone to go rent it, purchase it, watch it. Enjoy it. Uh, Stephen, how the hell are you? I am doing fabulous, Daniel. How are you? Good. Thanks for uh, coming <clears throat> on uh, for this episode of Talking Palettes. And, uh, Talking Palettes. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for having uh, me on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 always fun. It's it's especially, you know, uh, very exciting to see, you know, talent that is, uh, you know, come out of, uh, you know, here in home in Colorado, uh, specifically uh, Colorado Springs. But uh, but you come from from other parts of uh, you know the unknown world <laughs> out there, right? From the world of Florida, man. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I hail from Orlando, Florida, and that's where I was raised, born and raised for 27 years, and then moved to Jacksonville Beach, Florida, for the last three, and then I've been out here for three years, and this is where I plan on staying. <laughs> nice, nice. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, what what ended up bringing you all the way out to to Colorado? Uh, this movie, actually, to be honest. So, um, I was working with uh, our, the producer on the movie, mm -hmm. Rook, by the way. Swing. Yep. Um, is uh, Steve Kitzman, and he and I worked together in Orlando for a number of years, and then he decided uh, I'm done with Florida, so he's packed up his stuff and moved out here to Colorado Springs, and spent the next like three or four years trying to convince me to come out here. And um, he ended up getting a job as the marketing director for Cripple Creek, oh, cool. which is where we shot about half of the movie. The other half we shot in Victor. Um, and yeah, he eventually hired me to come out and shoot some commercials for the casinos. And then it just okay. took that one trip getting here. And I was like, oh my God, this is the place for me. Like I just felt wow. drawn here. So yeah, I went home and told the wife and I waited a couple, probably, I think it was a couple months before I told her like I, how I was feeling. And because oh. we had just gotten to the beach and she loved the beach. I didn't mm -hmm. love the beach, but she loved yeah. the beach. I yeah. love the community at the beach, but the actual ocean itself. But um, told her and she was like, you know what, wherever you feel like we're supposed to go. So we came out okay. here and found a place and yeah, here we are. That's that's so cool. It's it, you know glad to hear that you know she's so supportive of what what you're doing. Yeah, I mean she saw me in all my other jobs and saw how miserable I was. So she was like, "Whatever, yeah. hey, if we if we can make it work, let's do it." You know, we only have one life. So. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I looked up look uh, looked up your work on IMDb, and it looks like you had uh, two uh, short films that you uh, did previously. Yes, I've I've done well. I've done a, a handful of short films. Those are the three. Those are the two that I wanted up on the IMDb. Okay. <laughs> you know, like those are the ones that like I really, really worked hard on. You know, and right. Um, uh, yeah. So the first one's a, a "Don't Look Away" it's a human trafficking awareness short. Um, we found out about I found out about human trafficking domestically. Yeah. About five or six years ago, I thought it was mostly international stuff and there was like not anything I could do about it. And then I found out it was here and it was very prevalent. So I said, well, I can, I can make a movie about it. Like that's about as much as I can push towards it. So that's where that came from. And then the second one, which is relative duplicity. Mm -hmm. Funny, funny thing is actually we, so that was written after Rook was written. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> so the original title for Rook was Black Red Gold, and it was like a oh. slow burn Cohen, you know, drama that gets dark and like really dark in the end. And that's just you know like Fargo or you know yeah. a, a lot of the Cohen brother movies. Um, and we were just doing it and drafting it and going on, and I and I was like, I, I like it, but I don't know, like it, like I'm not sure if it's like exactly the feel I would wanted to go for, but I, I, I didn't know. And I told Isaac, my uh, my co-writer, mm -hmm. Isaac Walsh, um, I actually stepped out to go get lunch. And I was like, dude, I just, I want to, I want to do something fun. Write a short film. Let's go shoot a, a short film. That's just fun. Just make it fun. Make it about gold, a gold heist or something, you know, put it yeah. in the vein of the story. But I just want to do something fun. 
Yeah. And so he wrote that short. He wrote Relative Duplicity. And so <clears throat> we went out and shot it in a day. And we had so much fun doing it. Oh, cool. That I would that when I got when we got done with it, I was like, that's what I want to do. I don't want to do a a drama that like gets is just like really slow and dark and brooding. Like mm -hmm. I like those movies, but it's not necessarily what I want to spend three years of my life on. So yeah. um I just I said, Hey man, can you re can you rewrite this <laughs> the script to make it feel more like the short? And um yeah, the very next draft was a lot more self-aware and you know he added the characters of like paul nobles and james the minnow and some of the more eccentric types yeah uh and yeah and that's that's kind of how the, then we spent the next i don't know six months or so you know uh you know rewriting and writing and trying new things and casting we kind of were like writing casting uh fundraising <laughs> Right. And like location scouting and like, like we're doing it all at the same time, hoping that each one was gonna work out, you know, and yeah. thankfully they did. That's, that's cool. Yeah. It, um, well, and, and, uh, you know, we were talking off camera. It's like, you know, you kind of want to have something that's a little bit more, uh, fun, especially, you know, during the, the <laughs> you know, the time that we're living in with, with, uh, you know, COVID and quarantine and, and uh, you know the, the political mood and everything. So I think I think this lends itself, to, you know, to making things a little bit, you know, cheerier and bubblier. That, that's the funny thing about it. Like if you look at the poster, you would mm -hmm. not think this is a fun bubbly right. movie. If right. you look, <laughs> if you watch the trailer, you might not even think that. But like it, you know, we we the, we both felt like, man, we just want to have fun. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. In this? We're not going to have fun. And so. Um, we just did whatever felt right. And you know what the fu funny thing is, so I wanted to mention this, the mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the short film, Relative Duplicity, yeah. uh, premiered at the Denver Film Festival the oh, cool. day before we went into production on Rook. So wow. that's awesome. I, I, dro I drove down there with the two leads, Zach and Sarah, mm -hmm. showed it, did the Q&A real quick, got right in the car and headed right back up the hill out the <laughs> out, out the Victor and started the next day. So like we were, the, you know, the question always comes like, what's next, you know? And so I was yep. like, funny, funny you should ask. <laughs> what's tomorrow. next is starting tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. so, 6 a.m., no alcohol for anybody. <laughs> no after parties. Yeah, no, no, no celebratory. We we celebrate after this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, it, it was cool. great. It helped us. It helped us raise money for the feature. That's that, yeah. and that's really the main reason we made it. I said, look, let's let's just do something that I can, sh you know, I'll shoot it, whatever. We'll just go out and spend a day on it, and it, hopefully, it'll be, it'll feel like what I want it to feel like, and that's what it did. That's, you know, the the, the differences in the short and the feature are pretty yeah. different but um the feel of it's there you know yeah. what i mean so yeah yeah it uh and in rook too like uh it it's it's really cool that to see uh colorado as the setting you know um uh, what was it uh you know uh victor right um, yep. uh, was it cripple creek or dry creek uh cripple creek so basically all southern teller county so Mm. Um, you, are you, you, you know about Cripple Creek and Victor and all that? Do you, are, are you aware of those? Will, spots? Um, I've ne I don't think I've ever been through any of those cities. I've lived here my entire life and I've probably never been through there. It's they're great. They're awesome. And that's why, I mean, really it was, we didn't have a story when I decided to move here and make a movie. All we had okay. was the town were those towns. And I said, like, I'll figure out something to do some mm -hmm. story to tell we're gonna do it here because <laughs> it was yeah. just, it's just so unique you know cripple creek is a bunch of little casinos and yeah. when i say little i mean little like you know two-story casinos like this nothing you would see in vegas and that's just yep. i think there's so much charm there and then victor is where the gold mine is which is where mm -hmm. i mean they still are producing like a million dollars a day in gold it's by far the like the most producing gold mine in the country and it's close to the most producing in the world nice. and it's just like so unique and we walk in there mm -hmm. and you're just, it's like the whole place is stuck in like like the 80s or something like it's like it's, everything just yeah. like stopped like time <laughs> stopped there and i just yeah. love it i love it so much and your cell phone don't like there's not good signal there and that just mm -hmm. adds to the charm because it's like hey i'll see you. i'm going to victor and you know it's great we love it 
Yeah, the yeah you with a setting like that, I mean, it's 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 practically another character. Um, you know, Elise and I are just like, oh my gosh, this looks like so many different places that we've driven through. Um, you know, at one at one point, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, um, oh shoot, you know, there's places that remind me of like Pueblo uh, in there, and uh, you know, Estes Park and stuff. It's yeah, it's 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 a nice mishma- mishmash of of uh, you know cities, even though it's in just like two locations. So it's yeah. you know, I I guess if you're a, a Colorado native, you know it, you know every little frame just kind of like uh, yeah takes you home. Uh, so so that's that was that was kind of a, a a nice added charm and stuff. Yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you um, you know secured your your cast. Uh, it sounded like uh, your two main actors. You already were working with them anyway. Well, sort of. So um, when we when we had, I think we had the fee- yeah we had the we had black red gold written at least draft four or five or something like that. And <clears throat> I told Steve Kitzman, my producer, mm-hmm. hey man, we I want to start looking for people because I know we're gonna try to shoot this next year, you know and we were planning on shooting uh, in March of 2018. Mm-hmm. And then we ended up pushing it when I decided to change it up on everybody and go with it in this more self-aware direction. I said, we can't shoot it in March. We got to push it to November. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but we were casting long before that. And so I was, so I, I basically just asked him, I was like, do you know anyone who knows any actors? Like, let's start there. Let's start with yeah. locals. Like, see if anyone's there, let's put out a thing and, get anyone to, to, you know, send in a reel or, you know, some sort of a, you know, uh, uh, audition or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Sarah, her mom, Sarah Johanna Jewell, her mom, uh, she's from Lake George, which is right next to Southern Taylor County. Or cool. It's in, it's in Southern Taylor County, but it's right next to Cripple Creek. And so she was actually uh, a native of there and, but she was living in LA at the, at the time. Yeah. And she's been acting, you know, in LA and stuff. And so I was like, well, geez, send us over a reel. I mean, I'd love to, love to see her, you know? So we saw her reel and it was, it had, you know, little moments that I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And, you know, maybe I, you know, we can work with that. So like we sent her over some sides and she auditioned for it um, just on a vi- like recording it on her cell phone, you know, and sending it in. And yeah. she asked if she said, my brother's an, I mean, my, uh, my uh, boyfriend's an actor too. Would you oh. mind if he read for Ben? And just we'll just read off each other. And I was like, yeah, totally, absolutely. Nice. So he read, and it was Zach, and that was, and that was her. And and I was like, okay, well, first off, he looks just like I wanted. Like I, I he he totally embodies the character. Yeah. He sounds awesome. I love the way he talks because he just has this like, Ugh. like there's just like this way about him that's you just you're just like dude. <laughs> yeah, and, there's uh, a and, and, and they are, and they already had chemistry. They already knew how to fight together. They already knew how to bicker. You know what I mean? And I was like, that's a hard, that's a hard part about, you know, uh, casting and like mm-hmm. getting, building that chemistry. And like, you know, they already had that. And I was like, okay, well, this is, this is cool. So um, I said, let's, so, so then we wrote the short film relative duplicity and they were already planning on coming in for like Christmas or Thanksgiving or whenever it was we shot it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Hey, can you give me a day? Can you just give me a day, and we'll just shoot this thing?" So once they shot that, and I saw the short, um, I was like, "Okay, yeah, these are the two. These are the, like that was when it was like for sure, like these are the two. And then we spent the next seven months just hunting down the rest of them, you know. And we went through a, a radical talent in mm-hmm. Denver okay. and big fish talent. Oh, nice in Denver. Big fish is where Bobby. We got Bobby because. Awesome. His character, David, mm-hmm. was my biggest thorn to to bear because I was I I he was he's such a powerful character in the movie and he like means so much to me like you know within his character that I I knew it had to be done right and I and like I just kept watching all these tapes of everyone and you know good actors but they just didn't like have that thing mm-hmm. and I saw Bobby's headshot because I, I swapped over to a couple other agencies trying to find him. Yeah. And I saw his headshot and I was like, well, he looks like how I want him to look on the outside, but I have no idea what his voice sounds like. I have no idea what he's been like emotionally and all this. So I had him send in a tape and he or tape 
sent in a iPhone video or whatever, and he sounded awesome. And I was like, holy crap, this dude is right. incredible. So we, we, me and Isaac jumped in the car and went out to meet him at his house. And we had some wow. drinks with him and just like got to know him. And I was like, dude, you have no idea how like, he, I told him he got the part at that time, like at his house. I was like, you, oh, you got it, man. And, uh, <laughs> and then he, and then he went to, he, he, he actually asked, he said, uh, cause we were asking him about, I was asking him about his like past and stuff. Like, I just like know like my actors and like where they come from and everything. And he was like, he was like, you want to know about my past? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I got the part right. Like, I'm not going to lose the part. Right. If I tell you some <laughs> and we both started laughing and I was like, ah, I've never even thought about that, but yeah, you're good. Just, you know, you're good. We're fine. You got the part. And so he, 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 and I just never, it became obvious how much like David he was mm -hmm. and how for this exterior that shows like this, you know, I mean, he's all tatted up. He's got the big old handlebar. One of our reviews actually re refer referenced him as a handlebar mustache that talks or something like that. And it was like, <laughs> I was like, man, he just, he just is that character. Cause the, cause David's character is, has this hard exterior, but he's yeah. soft on the inside. He, he, really you know, he, had, he has this thing with his daughter and this guilt, this John mm -hmm. Wayne esque guilt yeah that he can't get through you know and that's why he stays and why he hangs with annie and why he takes care of her and stuff and the more i talked to bobby the more i was like this is the guy who would do that like this right. actor this human like not the character like <laughs> bobby <laughs> right well i so. i think i think for for the movie too like he ends up being the heart of the film like like with without him um i i could see all the other characters just kind of like in fight and just disperse and just go their separate ways. And then your movie's like 30 minutes long. Yeah. No, he's, he, he's, he's what we like to call the rook. He's right. Right. He's uh, and he, he actually did this tattoo for me. He's oh, a tattooer. Cool. You know, he's a tattoo, you know, yep. Bobby, yep. He, he did this. Uh, he gave me and Isaac one. Isaac's is on his forearm here, oh, but he cool. did this the night, last night of shooting. We wrapped uh -huh. and we went into the, you know the bar scene where um, this not the main bar set, but the, the the one that Kyle and Ben go into and get wasted the night before the right. thing and all that. Right. We went in that bar, and he pulled out his machine and <laughs> gave us his tattoos in that bar. Nice. And, uh, it, was, it was fun. It was good. Did he? But he's, he's great. Did he uh, tattoo uh, you, uh, or or was it the 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 entire crew? It, he brought two. St he brought enough for two. So oh. he said, he said, I, I, I guess it's like, uh, he's got to like swap out it, gloves and like everything, yeah. like each time, obviously the Fire. needle and everything. Yeah. yeah. So he did it. Like he didn't just like pull out a needle and just start, you know, going to town on us. Right, he, right, he, did, right. he did it safely, but he only had <laughs> enough for two. And I was like, well, I'm doing it. And Isaac was like, I'm doing it. Cause he, he had been with me this whole time. You know, he was yes. living in my basement and like, mm. that was, that was the thing. Like Isaac and his wife, um, mm. This is his first movie too. This is a lot of our first movies. A lot of people on Rook is the first thing. And but he followed me from Florida and he was like, Yeah, I'll come write this thing with you. So he moved into my basement and that room right there. And yeah. <laughs> you know, we lived together for a year and a half or so and it was great. And it was awesome. Uh, that's 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 wonderful. Um yeah, it's it, it it's it's great to get you know these you know groups of talent together to do all these, you know, fun, creative, you know, big group projects. And everything, um, it's it, it's really heartening to to hear you know you you pull in from uh you know the local talent pool and stuff because that's that's always one thing that uh, when you talk about like Colorado you never really think about film. Um, I've got a background in illustration, film, and stage production, and um, you know uh, like the art scenes amazingly coalesced and and. Uh, you know, the music scene here is basically like a massive extended family, but it's, it's always been, you know, something that I've, I've always wanted to see really happen with, uh, with film out here. Cause you really don't need to, to move to, to LA to, to do feature films. Um, well, unless you're doing a beach movie or something like if you need, if you need the beach, <laughs> Orlando. thankfully I don't have to worry about that. The one place that I can't shoot here is somewhere I don't really want to be anyways. Right, right, right. <laughs> so it works out. But yeah, I was, I was surprised too. When we first got here, I was like, I was, because coming from Orlando, I mean, geez, you know, we have 
film schools and Disney and Universal and like every everywhere, you know, and everyone's, you know, out there and stuff. And so to come here, it was like it was a little difficult to to find people, you know, in, uh, who wanted to jump into it. You know what I mean? Especially for someone who didn't have any credentials. You know what I mean? It's very. And I get that for sure, hundred percent. It's just, it's just like in Orlando, you put out a Craigslist ad and you've got thirty emails within the hour. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's very, it's just a different experience. But I mean, every single person that was on this movie was awesome, and they did great, and they and and they had fun, and that's that's what I like to make sure of is you know whether the movie turns out good or not is is a gamble in any movie, no matter the budget. But right. whether or not you have fun and you create an atmosphere where people can feel safe and, you know, encouraged and, you know what I mean? Like when something goes wrong, it's like, hey, we figure it out together. You know, like that's that's yeah. what I like to do on, on sets. I, I want people to go away and say, well, geez, no matter how that turned out, I had a blast. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, you know, Stephen, uh, growing up, what, what uh, you know, what really got you in interested in uh, like filmmaking and uh what was your, you know, like your favorite uh, uh, films and TV shows growing up? Um, well, my favorite movies growing up were like anything I could get from the library. So, you know, like those early like kid sports Disney movies and like yeah. Sandlot and Rookie of the Year. Wow. And, um, you know, the sci-fi stuff was like Explorers. Did you ever see Explorers? With, with I remember that with uh, young Ethan Hawke. Yeah, and, his first movie in, Waukee, in uh, River Phoenix. Oh, that's right. River Phoenix was in it too. Great movie, but it's yeah. it's it's uh it's just a lot. Of, it's a fun movie, you know. The kids kids mm -hmm. doing something special and supernatural and, and magical, and like I just love those kinds of movies. So like, yeah. you know, a, a, among my favorite Spielberg movies is like E. T. and and mm -hmm. and Hook, which Hook is like cr critically you know horrible, right. but it's like one of my favorite Spielberg movies and. Okay. It just hit me at that time, you know, and so when it, and then t television stuff was like, um, so I grew up very conservative uh, in a very conservative Christian household. So I wasn't allowed to watch much, but what I did sneak away to watch was um, stuff like Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah, and, and um, a lot of uh, you know Nickelodeon stuff and and. Uh, yeah, but I wasn't as much into TV as I was in the movies. Okay. Um, but the movie that made me want to make movies mm -hmm. was uh, actually Saving Private Ryan. Oh, it wow. Was, yeah, and I saw it really young because my grandpa was in World War II, so my dad wanted to show me what it was like, you know, or at least what it was like for some of them. You know, my grandpa was uh, a radio operator in a uh, B-52 bomber. Mm. But nonetheless world war ii you know i'd only heard about it and learned about it from the books and everything and he just felt strongly enough that i should know what my grandpa went through so yeah he showed that to me and i cried for the first time in a movie and um i i just didn't know movies could like affect emotion that hard and i just mm -hmm. thought they were for fun and then for some some about it i don't know some about like how it moved me you know when they say like something moves you you know yeah it moved it moved me in a in a deep way and so like i just like I, I was like that was it that's what i want to do i want to move people with with a camera yeah that that's uh that's 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 really wonderful to uh to want to aspire to I mean, yeah saving private ryan incredibly visceral uh feel um i mean it's yeah especially that that opening scene is just so daunting and, and uh yeah you you um it's very transportive in that sense yeah uh, but uh but yeah i i could uh, i could totally see you know how it, you would be compelled to to want to make uh make films you know to both entertain and 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 to to, to move and uh you know compel people so that's that's wonderful yeah well and that's 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 the goal and so like yeah you know i start i didn't get to make a movie for a long time but uh my first short film well mm -hmm. i did my first two short films at the same time and i they're not on I mean, they're on the internet, but not anywhere that anyone can see. Um, <laughs> they're on the dark web. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but one it, one of them is called Eternity, and it's a World War II movie, and and I scripted a thirty two minute film out of it. But after like two days of shooting, like the weather got bad and people started dropping off and everything, and I was like, "Gee, okay, well, I, 
can't really make this whole thing. So I turned it into a trailer. And for the next two years, I just went out and sh got pickup shots of like what would be like a movie trailer shot. You know what I mean? So just really dramatic scene, really dramatic scene. You know, right. one shot here of someone getting shot and falling over and a medic mm -hmm. walking over to him. Switch over here to a couple Nazis doing the thing. Yeah. Switch over here to, to, to you know, I was in it too as like someone just with – because no one would do th this one thing I wanted to do, which is put a bunch of fireworks all over my, you know, jacket and and look like I'm just getting a, you know shot to shreds. Yeah. And I was and no one would do it because you know so I was like, well, I'll do it. So I <laughs> and it hurt. It, yeah, it definitely hurt. I mean, but you know, it's a cool right. shot in the movie. So, um, but uh, but yeah, so it affected me on a level to where like I spent the next three years of my life like putting yeah. into that 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 short film. So, you but it has like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, it's funny. Cause there's like, like I started when I had like a, a Sony handy cam. So there's like some Sony handy cam shots in there. And then I went to a DVC 80 and there's some, some DVC 80 shots. And then a, a, the DVX 100, the Panasonic DVX 100 that came out. It was the first video camera that could shoot 24 P and all that. So, but nice. yeah, you know, it was, it was fun. We got a lot of friends in the, in, in those early films. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's, it's fun being able to, you know, put, uh, put that stuff to, together and then, you know, see the, the direct, uh, you know, connect the dots of, you know, where, uh, your trajectories, you know, going or, or going to go, uh, hopefully. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think it all, all begins kind of like, a you know, it's got to be fun. Like you've been saying with, uh, with Rook, it, it's got to be fun. Otherwise, why, why do it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a, I don't have a lot of like really like deep um, messages that I want to spread except for like, I think the big message I, that everyone should be spreading right now is, you know, the whole do to others message, you know what I mean? As you want to be done to yourself. I think that's a very apt I agree. Uh, wh whether or not you're religious or you're not or whatever, it's mm -hmm. a very simple thing <laughs> to do is just yeah. like think about like, would, would I want someone to do this to me? And that's kind of uh, like on the deep level, like what Rook is kind of about, you know, it's right. a lot of bad decisions mm -hmm. and, you know, he it, Ben kind of learns that in the end, you know what I mean? And, 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 and he gets a chance to really see the whole thing lay out and like, right. you know, she learns that, you know, it's uh I'm not going to spoil anything, but she learns that, you know, her, even if you're kind of passive, your decisions and what you allow to happen can be just as damaging. Right. And so especially with the climate nowadays, it's, yeah, um, it's a lot, it's a lot more um, important that we don't let things slide, that we don't let bad decisions just go in, you know, cause we're not, even if we're not like directly doing the thing, if right. we know about it, it's, if, if we're complicit, it's just as bad. So. No, totally agree. It's it's kind of uh, what what's allowed you know the, the current atmosphere for a lot of our friends to just you know go haywire, and uh, and then you know uh, at the same time I've been you know taking a lot of time you know learning uh, you know what a lot of my my black friends have had to put up with and and I thought I knew a lot I don't know shit. No, nah. <laughs> this has been so, a, a an awakening for sure. You know, right, and, right, and. And opportunities have presented themselves recently, mm -hmm. like since a lot of the stuff came up and it, it's scary, but it's, but you just got to remember that like, that, you know, there's a whole half of our community, if not more, has been dealing with this their whole lives. And it's like, right. I'm not going to, I like, am I going to let myself be comfortable another time? You know what I mean? As opposed mm -hmm. to, I don't know, you know, like I just, oh, I think we've been comfortable for a long time and, you know, right. so. I'm okay being uncomfortable if if it can make someone else comfortable. Right. No, uh, I totally, I totally agree. And you know, the other thing too is, is like, you know, during times like this to, to helping and, you know, help with the, the community uh, messaging and stuff. What, what a great opportunity to, you know, create artwork, uh, you know, that, that reflects that uh, as, as well, you know, some of the messaging in Rook um, looks like um Asha says hi, hey guys. And, oh, that's that's Asia. She's a she's a part of our team. She's oh, awesome. Fantastic. She was she was a PA on the on Rook actually. Oh, she came cool. out just for like two days and worked her ass off and was incredible. And we love you, Asia. 
Yeah. And then uh, Bobby says, uh, you know, right on you guys. Oh, Bobby's here. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, uh, it, it, it's pretty important, uh, I think, uh, to, to reflect on that and, and uh, to share your talents and, and uh, you know, do stuff like that. The um, Oh, uh, yeah, Stephen, did you go to – you went to film school, I, I take it, right? Or are you uh, self – Sort of. Oh, sort of. okay. So there's a there's a community college that is I, I believe they just became it or recently became a state college, but it's called Valencia Community College when I was there. Cool. And uh, they had a film course, but you had to take all the prerequisites first to actually get into the course. Okay. And um, I, it wasn't like a big film course. It was like kind of video this and whatever. And I had been doing. Uh, production and making films for a long time anyways. So okay. um, I just basically took all the film classes and left before they found out. I just didn't take any, like barely, uh, you know, no, no maths or, you know, sciences. I, I took biology yeah. and didn't do so good in that. And I was like, you know what? I, no one's going to ask for my degree. I'm just going to take all the film courses. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. I took the film courses and like an acting class and like, you know, st just basically yeah. stuff that, you know, a couple literature classes, uh, philosophy, mm -hmm. you know, trying to like figure out okay as a director what am i going to want to know you know right. and i i guess i just went more for you know like uh it, emotional and like you know mind stuff than uh technical stuff nice so well, but yeah so i kind of went to film school <laughs> that's cool that's that that's that's a pretty good it sounds like a, it's a pretty uh, good streamlined you know i know what i want let's go get in there and get the hell out uh, well, that's the thing film school is a lot of like you know so i you know it's hard to differentiate between a film school and like a like a like a trade school film school you know what i mean like a lot of film schools they make it look like they they're training directors and producers and stuff but really it's a trade school it's for gaffers and you know technicians and and cinematographers and that's all great and stuff but if you really want to be a director there's i mean like you know it, 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 all directors are different and everyone like has a different way they do it right and there's like no there, there aren't really rules i mean there's some like unwritten rules to it but mm -hmm. you know stuff like eyeline and like you know make just yeah. continuity stuff that you want to be aware of but i mean how to direct is really kind of based on who you are as a person, you know, you know, there's some directors who are really quiet and they just like to, you know, basically, you know, be like, yeah, hey, a little fast, you know, like Lucas is, you know, George <laughs> yeah, Lucas, yeah. Everyone, everyone laughs at him because he doesn't, he doesn't want to know That's about the intense. process. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then there's like other directors like Kubrick who don't even care what your process is. He's got his own process and he's like, I'm, right. I'm going to make you do what I, what, you, <laughs> what I want you to do no matter the cost. And then right. there's other ones that just want to have fun and just seem like they, they, you know, they just really enjoy living in the world of their films. Like Wes Anderson, you know, feels like, yeah. it just seems like he just wants to live in that world that he has created. Right. And like, maybe, maybe this world's, you know, too mean for him or something like that. I'm not sure, but I, I don't, I, and I don't even know what kind of director I am yet. Like I, right. I, I have all these stories that I want to tell and I think I would love to live in those worlds too, but right. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Well, uh, that sounds uh, pretty cool. Uh, you know, uh, are you guys uh, already developing? You know, of course, that the next question. You know, you know, what's the next project? You know, are you uh, hard at work on the the next project? We are hard at work on the next project. It's it's a little slow going because we're still we're we just released Rook. So you know, a ton of my time is. Uh, promoting rook yeah and and getting it out and like trying to get you know some um i'm courting a couple sales agents right now for international distribution and you yes. know still just kind of taking it slow i'm we're not really in a big hurry you know all the all the producers and everyone they they know that this is a long game and they all have equity in the movie so mm -hmm. yeah. i guess they'll they'll you know everyone will be it, it's it's not going anywhere it's out right. and it's it's there forever now so the next thing is um in the works we're doing we're uh we're uh we're we're currently doing interviews right now so nice um yeah and that's that, cool. you know 
you will see where we'll see we'll see what it is i'm not 100 percent sure what, it, what it's going to look like but uh it's interesting cool uh looks like uh bobby uh, posted another comment uh, the director provided the light that the stars <laughs> reflect oh <laughs> bobby is my emotional shaman by the way whenever i have a problem whenever i'm in a, in a deep dark place i call bobby and he it holds my heart like a gentle, like a like a new bird, and and places it back in the nest, and softly oh. speaks wonderful somethings <laughs> to me as I as I dismantle in front of his eyes. <laughs> but that's what make it. That's what making a movie does. And I quit yeah. smoking a year and a half ago, so like it's been oh. a. I quit smoking, got a new puppy, uh, got um, bronchitis, hmm. and tried to edit this movie all at the same time. <laughs> oh jeez. It, it's oh, been a it's been a year. It's been a wild time. Yeah, so. uh, man. Well, I'm I'm glad you're over the bronchitis. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. you know during COVID. That's that 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 you know having something like that would be not fun right now. If it had happened uh, when COVID was around, then I would have been like, oh, this is definitely COVID because it was it right. was bad. I, I, it was like just really bad. I thought it was because I quit smoking. I thought it was like my body like wanted to kill me or something. And and then my <laughs> wife got it man. too, and you know, and all this stuff. But this was months and months before uh, COVID hit. Uh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, yeah, it's been interesting. And then COVID hitting, like you know, right as I start, I was b finishing this. You know, mm -hmm. I was planning on submitting it to a bunch of festivals, and then um, I just assumed that most of them would be wouldn't be around if like mm. you know i mean the, the 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 you know COVID hit right during submission season so it was like right. what the heck is going to happen so i just kind of pivoted and was like well it's finished it's done why don't we just yeah. try to get it distributed now and uh just send it out to a bunch of distributors and um really wanted to go with gravitas ventures really hoped that yeah. they would like it because they're a cool company and um they they've been they've been doing a lot. They've been picking up a ton of movies and uh, you know, I just feel like I just, I don't know. I had a feeling I had this gut feeling like they were the ones and they, they were one of the ones that emailed back. And so cool. It well, worked out. Were, so they were one of the first ones that you submitted to for distribution then they were among the like, I oh, geez, maybe 60 or 70 email addresses that I found. Cause I, 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 I didn't have a sales agent. We just, I just searched the internet for email addresses nice. for okay. dis distributors. And then I just sent it out to all of them. And okay. you know, it, it may have been more than that. I don't remember anymore, but uh, it was a lot. And we got about four or five back who were, who wanted it. Gravitas was among them and their offer was uh, definitely the best. So nice. Good. Um, yeah, worked out. That, that's awesome. Yeah, when when I um, when I saw their their logo come up uh, on your trailer and stuff, I was like, "Holy crap!" He's yeah, because because I I know I know of the distribution company and a lot of yeah, I've seen a lot of the films that they've distributed. I you know I'm a fan. They, a lot of art. They, yeah, they picked up a few uh, Colorado films actually. So mm. uh, there was one called Man Camp. Oh, okay. Uh, that was done in Denver. Um, well, I'm blanking on the other ones. I I just saw another one of them because I was we I spent the weekend with one of the our actors and mm -hmm. he had one a movie shot on his his dad's property and they gave him the DVD of it and it it was Gravitas and it looked just like our our case too. But oh, cool. um, but he hadn't watched it yet. But yeah, no, they're cool. They're cool. So nice. I'm I love I love that Colorado is starting to. You know, I don't know. I think this is uh, this is way it's way better than LA here. It's way better than anywhere else that I know. And oh yeah, yeah, the, the Asia's rem reminded me. It's the, the 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 guy in the bulldozer who took out the town. Who was that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a, a nice local story. Yeah, isn't there a do <laughs> there's a documentary uh, on it, that? I think? Yeah, yeah. That's what they that's what they did. It's uh, Oh, the documentaries uh, distributed by Gravitas. Nice. Yeah. So. Uh, and then looks like uh, Bobby came back with, he is one of the best. Oh, man. What a spiritual guide. You he know? is. I was, I was going to say he's, he's like a, a power animal, but I don't know if that does it justice. <laughs> man, a power animal. Yeah, he's he's just, he's you know, yeah. he, he was there for me. That's all. That's that's the best I can say. He was there for me when I needed him. Big that's, time. 
Yeah, that's great. On yeah. set and off the set. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby's a sweet guy. I've um yeah, he's he's so much fun to to talk to. When you're doing a script read, it he's intense and he's focused. You know, it's the material at hand and it's just like, okay, and here I am just all over. I'm I'm relearning the the English language right in front of him, and and uh, I'm surprised he's putting up with my shenanigans. So it's <laughs> it's it's pretty awesome. But uh, man, that's cool. Um, yeah. yeah, the the nice thing too about Colorado, you know, is it's got all these different terrains and settings and backgrounds. Yeah, you know, if uh, if you want a, be- a beach, I mean, it's got got big lakes too. So that's true. You know, the, you know, you can go anywhere and you, you know, also the, unfortunately the weather can turn on a dime. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one problem. It worked for us because I wanted to good. shoot this in the snow, which is why I, I originally scheduled it for March. And so oh, okay. everyone said, everyone said you'll be safe in March. And then when we pushed it to November, everyone's like, there's no way you're getting snow or like, if you do, it'll be a miracle and it won't be there very long is what right. everyone said. Right. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I mean, I'll, do, I'll it'll be easier on the cast and crew if there isn't snow, but yeah, secret secretly like down deep, I was like, please yeah. Jesus, let there be snow. Like, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's it, it it boosts the production value just because it's hard to shoot in. You know, it's really right. tough to to make a movie and this stuff. And out here, no, people didn't know. I didn't even know how quickly it melts, especially at ten thousand feet elevation, which is where we shot the movie. So. Yeah. Um, it was funny. It, ha- it wasn't, it hadn't snowed at all. And yeah. the day before we started shooting Sunday, where I, when I was at the Denver film festival, yeah, it like came in like a, like crazy and just, just actually it wasn't the day. It wasn't the day before it was like two days or three days before. Cause we were doing some tests with it. Cause my DP Mo was like, well, I guess we got snow now and that's a whole different ball game for, sh- for shooting. You know what I mean? Cause to expose, you gotta, you gotta be very creative to expose it. Right. Right. And, uh, so I was like, Oh, sorry. You know, but I was like, <laughs> you know, secretly to myself. I was, so like, yeah, thanks, I was like, Oh man, this sucks guys. Sorry. <laughs> oh man. I'm so, Oh, this, you know, uh, but I mean, and, 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 yeah. and yeah, so, but, but then it, it melted that first, after that first week, it was like almost all gone. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Crap! What are we gonna do?" And the next Sunday, which was our break day, because we did six yeah. and six, um, I and coincidentally, I also had to go to Denver to pick up Lou Temple, who was mm-hmm. one of the he was the one who played Bill in the movie. Yeah. Uh, freaking stormed again and br- and relayed the whole, pl- and it was perfect for another week for us, and it was nice. crazy, and it was just like amazing, and it was great. So like, yeah, we we <laughs> took advantage of the the weather being weird and it just, yeah, it, it, it was, it was sweet. That's, that's awesome. Do you, um, yeah, during the filmmaking process, and I know you're wearing a lot of hats and stuff, but uh, you know, as you like learn a little bit about uh, you know, your, your actors and kind of your situation, do you find that you have to, you know, adjust uh, obviously on, sometimes on the fly when things, aren't necessarily going your way, you know, with, with production, you know, day to day, but do you also find that you have to adjust script or do you like, do you cater your script to, to, you know, certain actors and their sensibilities? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we had, so we, um, which I mean, just because we knew we had such a short amount of time, Mm -hmm. I knew we were going to have to shoot a lot of pages every day. Right. So what we did was th- we first tried to cast theater guy, theater people, theater mm-hmm. actors, because I just assumed that they'd be good at doing long takes and like they would have all their stuff memorized real good and real quick. And, you know, theater is so much more. I mean, it's it's a it's, you know, an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is, straight, no break. Right. They got to be perfect at it, you know, and they got to be able to work with each other. And when something, po- when someone does something a different way, they got to adapt to it. Or if someone right. forgets a line, they got to adapt it. So I was just like, man, these, that, that would probably cut down on, you know, cause I don't know, that was just my thinking. And so um, when it came to things getting bounced around on set, they were just like, yeah, let's do it. Let, how about, what if I say this? What if I do that? What if I, 
case in point, like uh, the James the Minnow scene, where we, what mm -hmm. the way it is, the way it intros him now with yeah. the throwing the muffin at me, which is that's my cameo. Is I'm the person walking past. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that was originally this like eight page long introduction scene of him, and it was like really dark, and it was like he he was like pretending to be like a hospice nurse and he like goes in and like tape records people's dying breaths. It was like really dark. It was like really wow. dark. And, and then, you know, intense. and then, and we had it all ready to go and we were going to, we were going to shoot it at the car manor and in mm -hmm. Pebble Creek and all this stuff. And we just got out there and we were like, dude, we just don't have time. It's like, we can either do that scene or we can spend it because it, it was, we were scheduled to shoot that the night of the shootout in, in the street, the big okay. shoot, main yeah. shootout. And, Isaac, who also was my first AD, because like he didn't have enough to do already. Um, <laughs> he was like, dude, we just don't have time. We can't shoot eight pages in three hours. Like it's impossible. So yeah, we either we cut down on the shootout scene. And before he even finished the sentence, I was like, no, figure something else out. And he was like, well, why don't we just have him sitting over here on the bench and, you know, have someone walk by and just something like, you know, we all, the, the whole point is to get the phone call. That was the whole point of the scene yeah. anyways, to get the phone call and go meet up with Jesse. So we just made it simpler. Cool. But we had, but we had to figure it out right then and there, like yeah. standing out there. It's like, Hey, we can't do this. What are we going to do? Let's try this. That's funny. Okay. And we, yeah. <laughs> and we did it. So, um, but yeah, having good actors and having people who just are, you know, even if someone's not like the best actor, if they're a good person and if they're, if, if them as a person is well suited for the role, then they're going to come up with fun stuff because they're going to be like, Oh yeah, I wouldn't say that. Or, or they're going to be like, Oh yeah, well I would, I wouldn't say that at all. I would just do this thing right here. I would just look at you weird or whatever. And so, yeah, I, I love it. Honestly, when things, when, when, you know, directing is just answering questions basically. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, when you're on set, at least like before there's a lot that goes into it, but when you're on set, it's like, just basically, yeah, that was good. That was bad. I like it. I don't like it faster, softer, whatever. <laughs> um, and so the more questions, the better. Yeah. I, I was just like, geez, this is great. What a great job to be able to, yeah, I really enjoy it. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, well, yeah, uh, Steven, we're, uh, you know, we've got just a, a few more minutes, uh, left, but, uh, you know, with uh, yeah, this uh, you know, crew of uh, of people that you've assembled for uh, for Colorado, and for all those uh, you know filmmakers out there, you know, just getting started or or interested in in uh, you know participating in in this creative uh, atmosphere, what would you uh, recommend? What piece of advice would you give them? Uh, for people who want to be directors or just want to be in the industry oh, in general, just filmmakers in general. Um, well, out here in Colorado, there's like a, a really cool community of filmmakers, you know, and there's, it's a lot smaller here in the Springs than it is in Denver. But, um, you know, I think everyone's just ready to get out of their house and do stuff, you know, and if you can create, if you can practice safe sets and, you know, do it, do it well, then, then yeah, get out there and just freaking do something. 48 hour film festivals coming up pretty soon. Mm. Um, we thought about doing that. We might do that. Cool. We'll see. Um, but in general, watch a lot of movies that you want to make, like watch the kinds of movies that you want to make so you can, you know, figure out how they work and mm. um, read scripts. Honestly, read a lot. Read. If you can read more scripts than move, then you watch movies just because to see how a script gets, you know, to see where the project begins in script form and then what it turns into is kind of a film school in itself. Cause you can say, Oh, interesting. They chose not to do this. And then you can go back and look at uh, behind the scenes and deleted scenes and see which scenes you thought read well, but didn't turn out well. And, you know, in the movie or whatever, there's a lot of like little things you can do like that, that are free that you can learn. Other than that, uh, if you're planning on shooting low budget movies where you got to just run and gun, uh, yeah. shoot, shoot weddings, get out there and get a camera and book weddings. Cause there's a ton of pressure right? and a ton of like mother-in-laws who are angry at you just for standing in the way of somebody. And you get right. a lot of like, there's just a lot of things that mimic a film set, you know, a lot of quick decisions. You gotta, you gotta jump and decide something. I mean, I've forgot like 
I forgot things before on weddings that I, you know, like I forgot my tripod plate once mm. and I was like, crap, what am I going to do? It's a wet, you know, it's a wedding. And I just ran over to the bride and I was like, Hey, you know, I think it would be more artistic if I did this handheld, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. And you know, she was like, that's a great idea. So I, you know, I, you just got to think on your feet like that. Right. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta come up with a lot of stuff. So yeah, shooting weddings is great. So yeah, what, what better way than uh, baptism by fire at a wedding? <laughs> and you can't get it back if you if you accidentally like delete the footage or make a big mm. mistake or forget to record during the kiss or whatever. You it's yeah. that's it. You're done. I mean, that's I, I knew a company in Orlando that literally they were doing tons of weddings, like tons. They were the wedding video videographers in Orlando. And they one wedding. It took one wedding. They they accidentally deleted all the footage, and they just packed up their stuff and moved because they were like, "It we that this will ruin us." Right. Is you can't get it back. <laughs> so I mean, that's pressure. That's pressure yeah. right there. Oh my gosh, that is intense. Uh, yeah. Stephen, where can uh, people go and uh, you know find Rook and and what and purchase it and watch it? Go, oh, well, you can start by going to rookfilm.com that has like behind the scenes photos. It has the trailer. It has all the links for where to buy it online, plus uh, the DVD and Blu ray links. Uh, DVD and Blu rays are always fun because it's something physically you can like post yep. and like talk about and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously we, you know, we're not trying to like get, you know, like this isn't going to make any of us rich, but it, what it is is going to give us, you know, the platform to make another thing, you know, make a new one. So um, any help with, you know, social media. And if you, if you, anyone out there who watches it, if you can rate it on IMDb and Amazon and iTunes or whatever you use, that would be very helpful for us. Cause there's a lot of trolls out there who are giving us uh, one stars and stuff like that. And they're from, they're international. And so they haven't even seen it cause there's no way to see it internationally yet. So those jerks. we gotta, we gotta beat those trolls. <laughs> So, so go to Amazon and, and uh, you know give it amazing reviews, five star. Like, be honest, like, like but, with you know. <laughs> oh, that's that's cool. Well, um, yeah, thanks so much for uh, you know being so generous with your time and uh, coming on and, and chatting. You know, kind of waxing creative and, and film a little bit uh, with me. Yeah, uh, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, it was, it was a pleasure, you know, meeting with you, you know, chatting with you. Um, you know, can't wait to, to see what you do next and everything. Uh, I think it'll be uh, absolutely spectacular. I appreciate it. It'll definitely be here in Colorado. So, e Excellent. Well, then we'll we'll see more of each other. Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> Anytime, my man. Anytime. Excellent. Well, uh, go ahead, uh, stay on uh, for a, you know after uh, uh, we end the broadcast. But uh, you know, for for everybody out there watching, go go see Rook, uh, go support uh, fantastic art here in Colorado, and uh, yeah, thanks again, Stephen. Um, but uh, I'm Dan Crozier. Uh, this is Talking Pouts. Uh, everybody, uh, have a great afternoon. Be good. Be kind. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.